hallelujah. We are so blessed and honored to be before you one more time on this second Sunday in the month of June of 2021. It's amazing that we're already halfway through another year and the Lord has kept you. And you ought to know that you have the victory through Jesus Christ. I want to first begin by just thanking so many persons for all of your kind words, your prayers, uh, the expressions of kindness and love to Pastor Joanne has simply been absolutely amazing. Uh, her eye is getting better each day, but she's still in a, a high level of discomfort because of the pain of three-hour uh, surgery and now a month ago. Um, but she is doing better. She's recovering each day. And so we want to say thank you for your prayers and thank you for all the expressions of love. And we're just believing that by the stripes of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Pastor Joanne, Joanne is healed, and again, I just want to say thank you for showing all the love that you have uh, to my honey brother Jones, to my wife. We come today on this Sunday before Father's Day, and we want to thank the Lord for what God's getting ready to do on next week, and then the week after that is going to be our scholarship Sunday, so we are excited that this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the uh, month of of your triumph in the name of Jesus. I want to thank uh, Reverend Trish Smith for being our worship leader once again today and want to thank Reverend Marcus Washington for giving our scripture and prayer today. We want to just give the Lord's name the honor, the praise, and the glory. If you'll go with me to our God in a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we come today in the name of Jesus. First of all, giving your name all the honor, the praise, and the glory. You brought us through 2020. You brought us halfway through 2021. And when we look back over our lives and think things over, you have brought us a mighty long way. But also, Lord, as we begin to get through and see the light at the end of this pandemic tunnel, we are believing that better is still coming. We're believing the best is still yet to come. We're still believing that you have blessings and miracles with our names on it. And as we've gone through Revelation, we want to say thank you that you've shown us that in the midst of everything, you're still guiding, you're still directing, and you're still in charge. So on this Sunday, hide me behind your cross, speak to me and through me. And if there's someone that needs to be saved, someone that needs to join your church, or someone just needs to hold on with a hope and a faith to know that you'll see them through. We're praying that your word shall go forth and not come back void. And we claim it so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I once again want to thank Reverend Washington for reading our scripture. If you'll go back with us as we continue our series in Revelation to Revelation, uh, the 16th chapter, uh, looking at verse number 17 and then going to the 17th chapter and looking at verse number 13. So first 16, 17, and then 17, 13. And, the, uh, and it reads like this, verse 17, of verse six, chapter 16, verse 17. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a mighty shout came from the throne of the temple of heaven, saying, It is is finished and then moving down to chapter 17 verse 13 they will all agree to give their power and authority to him together they will wage war against the lamb but the lamb will defeat them because he is lord over all lords and king over all kings and his people are called and chosen and faithful ones and the people of god said amen uh, this week I was driving on the Beltway, and I was driving, and I don't know if you're like me, but uh, there's some things I've been praying for and waiting for God to move, and they haven't come yet, and so uh, they're con constantly on your heart and on your mind. And I was driving down the Beltway, I saw this 18-wheeler truck, and to my amazement, on the back of the truck, I saw these words. It said, God is moving. Be patient. It said, God is moving. Be patient. And for me, it might as well have dropped out of heaven. For it was something that was just a, a word of confirmation and assurance. And I, I'm just believing today there may have been someone like me 
who's been praying for something and believing God will be moving in some area or aspect of your life or the life of someone that you know and love. And I want you to hold on to a faith that God is moving. Be patient. And, and, it's, it's, and as I thought about as we've gone through Revelation, that's almost the whole meaning of Revelation. God is moving. Be patient. John, as a prophet, is telling this to the people who are in Rome, who are in Christian, who are in who are Christians in Rome, and many of them have lost their lives. Their family members are wondering what's going to happen to them next, and John is trying to remind them God is still moving, and if you hold on, your change is going to come but you're gonna to have to be patient. And when we use this word patient, we're not acting as if you just wait for anything to happen. No, patience is the sense like a seed in the ground. It, it germinating down, but it's growing up. It's, a, it's an active patience. It's, it's the patience that a, a person like Alex Smith, who played football for the Washington football team, and in November of 2018, had a injury to his leg that first they thought they were gonna to have to amputate his leg. Then they thought he might lose his life because of the injury. And there was no way he could ever play football again. But from November of 2018 until the fifth week of the season in 2020, Alex Smith, patiently went through rehabbing, patiently saw his leg slowly but surely getting better, patiently did all the training necessary to try and get back as an athlete at that level of perfection, and then patiently in the fifth week of the season in 2020 got back on the football field, and because of that, and his outstanding achievements that year became the comeback player of the year. Someone who's watching today, you have not been physically injured, but you are waiting on something and God is saying that you must be patient. But in that patience, you are doing everything you can that you can to bring about the desired results. But when it's all said and done, God is moving. And he's going to give you a sign. He's going to give you an assurance. He's going to give you a word to let you know that your patience is not in vain. But if you hold on a little while longer, these heavy burdens will soon be passing over. Run the race. Keep the faith. And in God's own time, your change is going to come. 2,000 years ago, this is what John was writing to the Christians in Rome in 2100 uh, A.D. John was trying to let them know that after I've written these seven letters to the churches, after you have seen the seven scrolls open, after you've heard uh, the trumpets blown, and, and now you have the bowls of wrath and judgment being emptied, I want you to know that God is still moving. And for the people of, of Rome who are Christians, that was so important because it was moving so slowly. Here it was, the most powerful nation empire in the world, where it's using their authority and influence and power uh, to uh, kill Christians and make life miserable for them and doing the most despicable things that could happen to a human being. And there didn't seem like there was any sign that, that things were changing because you were facing such a strong enemy. But John was trying to tell the people, even though Rome is strong, God is stronger. And I want you to see him moving in the midst of your situation in ways that you don't quite understand. And so as we come to chapter, at the end of chapter 16, we begin by seeing that the seventh bowl of wrath and judgment it has been poured out. And we always have to remember that God, in, through Revelation and through John, is showing God's people that, number one, Jesus died 
so that you would have a chance to see God's love in action. And for those who are Christians in Rome, you have received that love that Jesus showed on a cross and then got up from the grave. And because you have received that love that Jesus showed you and that God sent to you, you're going to be okay. But God is also telling persons, since you have refused the love that I sent through my son, I am now going to have to convince you in another way, and that is my wrath and judgment. So since you have refused my love because of your free will to do what you want to do, I'm now going to send wrath. I'm now going to send judgment against you so that hopefully because you see my wrath and judgment, you will turn from your wicked ways. But as the seventh bowl is being poured out, those who have not received God's love through Jesus and those who have not responded to the wrath have been hard-hearted like Pharaoh. God is saying my judgment is now coming against you completely. Before with the scrolls and before with the trumpets, my wrath and judgment was partial. But now as the seven bowls have been poured out, this is final. And you have refused, your, your hard-heartedness has refused to receive the love and now you've res refused to receive the judgment. And it's very important for us to realize that when God is talking about his wrath and judgment, he's not talking about Uncle Willie who's still gambling, smoking, drinking, and running around. He, it's not against individual persons who are sinning. He is speaking about systems and governments and entities that have not only caused people to, to have sin, but also have intentionally put in place systems by which persons will never have a chance to have God's life and God's life more abundantly. He is speaking about systems, for instance, like the police system, in these United States. He's, he's speaking about when Derek Gavin had his knee on George Floyd's neck. It was not just Gavin with his knee. He was representing the institution of how policemen do what they do. Gavin was actually demonstrating to other policemen how it's to be done. And if there had not been a videotape, Remember, the coroner's report said that George Floyd died because of other problems that he had in his health. He did not die from a knee on his neck. It, it, the report said that George Floyd was resisting arrest. The report said that everything the policeman did was within uh, how police should operate. So unless we had had this videotape, George Floyd's uh, Gavin, the policeman, he never would have been brought to justice. And those of us who've lived under this system uh, know that this is something that did not just happen to George Floyd, but this has been happening from century after century after century. It is an institution, police force has been put into place to make sure that persons who are especially oppressed stay oppressed because it's a case by which the police are in place to know that whatever they do, they can never be charged. Whatever they do, they can never be convicted. Whatever they do, the system is in place from the district attorney to the grand jury to the government to make sure their actions have no repercussions. And not only that, God is saying through John that these countries then not only use police, but then use military forces so that those who make money off of the oppressed and then make the oppressed serve in military for so-called democracy, but in reality is keeping the rich rich and the poor poor, that those persons who put these systems in place are the ones who are the greatest sinners. Dr. King used to talk about militarism and economic exploitation and classism and sexism. It's these isms that John is speaking about that Rome had put in place, that Babylon had put in place, that Greece had put in place, that Persia had put in place, and any government that puts in place, the wrath of God is against them. And he's letting the people know that much like us today, 
you have marched in 1963 for these same issues and there has been no change. And not only that, the Niagara movement in 1908 was coming against the same issues and there's been virtually no change. And then he goes on to say that David Walker's appeal in which in 1805 he spoke against these kinds of activities, but there was no change. When Richard Allen formed the first all black convention in Philadelphia in 1830, they addressed the same. So from the 1800s to 2021, these issues have been the same. And each generation thinks that if it can just convince those who are in power that what they are doing is wrong, they will then change. But John is trying to let us know then and today that the persons who have put these systems in place know what they're doing. They are not doing it haphazardly. They're not doing it because they don't have a knowledge of what they're doing it. They're doing it conscientiously. They're doing it with intent. And they're doing it to make sure that those who are down stay down and never can have the good life that God has put in place for them. It is against these persons. It is against these systems. It's against these governments that John is saying the wrath of God and the judgment of God is coming because just like Pharaoh, they have hardened their hearts to God instead of trying to receive what God is trying to say. And so at the end of chapter 16, John is saying that this final bowl of wrath is against the air. And when the air is polluted, you can't live. And, and John says, and he goes on to even greater extent and says, not only is the bowl of wrath against the air, but then there's lightning, and then there's thunder, and, 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 and then there's earthquakes. And so Babylon, which really stands for Rome, has now crumbled. And, and, and not only that, hail is coming down. 10 pound hail, 15 pound hail, 20 pound. And if you've ever been in a hailstorm where it might be the size of a small ball, can you imagine a hail coming down weighing 15 pounds? God's judgment and wrath is against Babylon, is against Rome, is against any system that continues to try and kill and put down and oppress people in a way by which consistently and conscientiously they do it. And God is saying, be patient. I'm still moving. Even though you don't see it, the judgment of God is coming against them. Even though it's taking so long, the, the judgment of God is coming against them. And, and as we move into the 17th chapter, God is telling John, what I'm trying to tell you in a spiritual sense is that there is a prostitute. And that prostitute is Babylon. That prostitute is Rome. And she has used her seductive powers to bring other nations to also do the terrible things that she has done to the Christians. John is saying God saw oh, when Nero had you used as human lap post, uh, set you on fire so that his party uh, could have light and literally use Christians as human light post. He's saying, I saw it when Nero sold animal skins on your back and then had you run into the woods and then sent wild dogs to chase after you and literally ate you alive. John is saying, God said he saw it uh, when you had to go into lion's dens and lions literally ate you alive while Rome had a stadium full of people just looking at you and seeing you being devoured that way. God is saying, I want you to know uh, that this prostitute, uh, Rome uh, and Babylon, it's a case by which the, the wine that she is drinking is really the blood of the martyrs. And God is saying, it's now time that I'm getting ready to act. It's now time that the manifestation of my judgment is coming against them. And as he said in chapter 16, he said, it's finished. Just like Jesus on the cross said, my love for you has been shown and demonstrated in such a way, it's finished. I've shown you my love. I've shown you my heart for you. I've shown you that there's nothing more 
a man or woman can do than to give up their life to show the love that God has for you. It's finished. And now God is saying to Rome, it's finished. My judgment, I've given all the judgment I can against you. And now I want you to know my judgment is finished and you have yet to turn from me. I'm talking to somebody here today because John is not just talking about systems and governments, but John is also individualizing it and saying whatever you're going through, God wants you to know God is moving. Be patient. That, that, that financial situation, that, 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 that enemy, because... John is ultimately saying what you're coming up against is not just entity systems and government, but it's good against evil. And someone's facing financial challenge today. God wants you to know he's moving. Keep on believing that whatever financial challenge you're going through, God shall manifest himself in such a way that you shall get over it. If your body is sick, God is saying, <laughs> God is moving. Be patient for the stripes of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ can still heal. If you're going through a family situation, God is moving. Be patient for God is still working it out for good. Whatever you're going through, whatever challenge, whatever pain, he's saying to all of us, not just to governments, God wants you to know he is standing on your side. He is fighting against the demonic attacks that is coming against you. And because of that, God is working it out. He's moving, be patient. I know what John is talking about because in 1983, it was a case by which it did not seem like anything was gonna be happening in ministry for Pastor Joanne and I. We had finished Howard Divinity School, gone back to Boston hoping to get a church, and for nine long months, nothing was happening and uh, somebody watching today it may be nine months it may be nine days it may be nine years but you have been waiting for God but I want you to know God is moving and in the midst of what you're going through God is going to send you an 18 wheeler truck God is going to send you a sign. God is going to send you a sermon. God is going to send you a word. God is going to send something to let you know that he's moving in the midst of your situation. So in 1983, while we were going through this, one day I was sitting on the end of the bed wondering if God was ever going to allow us to move in ministry as we thought. And then all of a sudden a song came up in the air. It wasn't on the radio, but I heard it in my ears. Hold on a little while longer these heavy burdens will soon be passing over run the race keep the faith in God's own time your change is going to come and that's the scriptural foundation uh, but the song was for Thomas Whitfield hold on don't you ever let go let my Jesus lead you and I guarantee you go when the burdens get tough and the going gets rough you got a friend and when I heard that song it was just like God is moving be patient my situation did not change but my attitude about the situation did change and I started to walk instead of in dejection I started to walk in manifestation that God was getting ready to do something. Someone here today, your situation has not changed yet, but I'm praying this sermon will change your attitude about the situation and believe that despite what you're going through, God is still moving. Be patient, and in God's own time, your change is going to come. And two months later, got a call from the bishop about a church in Fort Washington, Maryland, by the name of Ebenezer. And God said through the bishop that if you go there, you shall be blessed. I want to let somebody know that God will give you a sign to let you know he's working all things together for good. John was telling the Christians in Rome in 100 AD that God was moving despite the blood of the martyrs, despite the power of the Roman Empire, despite the fact that the Caesars of Rome were calling themselves gods, were calling themselves saviors, were calling themselves divine, were calling themselves Lord, and all the power of Rome had come against you. He was trying to let them know 
God is still moving for things are getting ready to change. Someone here today, you don't have any money. You don't have a job. You don't have the influence. It seems like you have nothing to work with. But God is saying, this situation is not bigger than me. Talk to me, Moses. The Red Sea is not bigger than God. Talk to me, Joshua. The Jericho Wall is not bigger than God. Talk to me, Daniel. The lion's den is not bigger than God. Talk to me, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The fiery furnace is not bigger than God. Talk to me, John Lewis. The Edmund Pettus Bridge is not bigger than God. Talk to me, black people. You've been through some tough times. You've been through some rough times. But through it all, God has been on your side. Whoever I'm talking to today, God is moving. Be patient. And your change is getting ready to come. And so in the 17th chapter of Revelation, God said the armies that have now come together with the harlot, with the prostitute, with Rome, are coming against the Lamb. But John is saying, don't get worried. Don't get confused. Don't get depressed. Because the Lamb shall have the final victory. Yes, Caesar is Lord. But God is Lord of Lords. Yes, Caesar thinks themselves as kings. But God is King of Kings. Yes, Caesar thinks himself a savior. But there's only one savior. Does anybody know that name? His name is Jesus. Oh, how sweet the sound. Jesus, every knee bows, every tongue confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord. So whoever God speaking to today, for some young person that tuned in almost by accident, God wants you to know God is moving. Be patient for that mama who's trying to figure out how it's going to work out. God is moving. Be patient for that the leader in academia. God is moving. Be patient for that young adult that's wondering how God is going to work it out. God is moving. Be patient for that person who is crying in the midnight hour. God is moving. Be patient. How do you know, preacher? Because somehow, some way, God will always give you a sign. Glory. Hallelujah. About a month ago, I was praying to God about a situation. And I was praying to God. I had the radio on. And as I had the radio on, all of a sudden, I heard Thomas Whitfield's song. Hold on. Don't you ever let go. Let my Jesus lead you wherever you go. When the burdens get rough and the going gets tough, you've got a friend. I had not heard that song since 1983. And God gave me that song right when I needed it to remind me God is moving. Be patient before this month is over. God's going to give you a sign. God's going to give you a word. God's going to give you something to let you know he's working behind the scenes. He's working for your good. He's working for your benefit. How do I know? Because they hung him high, stretched him wide, put his body in your tomb, and there he died. But God was moving. And one day, be patient. Two days, be patient. But early is the Sunday morning, the manifestation of what you were praying for came to pass. Hold on. It's coming. Hold on. Keep the fight. Hold on. Fight to the finish. Hold on. You're on the winning side. Hold on. Be patient. 
for God is moving in the midst of your situation. I know you don't see it now, but God's going to give you a word. God's going to give you a sign. God's moving. Be patient. For me, it was on the back of a truck on Interstate 95. And what I was going through and praying about, God gave me a peace <laughs> that passes all understanding. For someone here today, I'm praying this word has given you a peace that's past all understanding. Matter of fact, I just want to go to God in a word of prayer with you and for you today. If you'll just allow us to go to God on your behalf. You're not in the sanctuary, but your need, your prayer, I know is before the altar of God. And because of that, God's going to work it out for your good. Eternal God, our Father, as persons are literally watching across the world, virtually we want to say thank you and that no pandemic can keep us from your presence. We thank you that you do never and will never have to socially distant from us, but we thank you that you're always there right beside us, walking us through, guiding us through, leading us through. Even when we go through the valley of the shadow of death, your word says we'll fear no evil because your rod and your staff is going to be with us. And every step we take, we want to say thank you that you're walking right beside us. And so right now there's someone who's watching, someone who's listening today, who's been going through challenges, who's been going through issues, who's been going through setbacks, who's been going through hurts, who's been going through situations that they don't know how they're going to get through. And if you do not supernaturally intervene, what they are looking for, needing for, believing for, cannot come to pass. But we want to say thank you. That's the kind of God you are. When there is no way, you make a way. When there is no hope, you give us hope. When we feel like giving up, you give us the power to run on to see what the end is going to be. So now give us the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And we want to say thank you that patience shall guide us. Patience shall undergird us. Because you are manifesting what it is we stand in need of. It's going to come to pass. So we're going to praise you in advance. We're going to say thank you in advance, my God, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We're going to say thank you. The healing shall come. Thank you. The deliverance shall come. Thank you. The joy shall come. Thank you. The peace shall come. Thank you. The power shall come. Thank you. The overpowering shall come. Thank you, my God. The money shall come. Thank you. The needs shall be met. And we want to say thank you. You shall provide for all of our needs according to your riches and glory. And we claim it so. In Jesus' name we pray. Can the people of God say amen <laughs> and amen. I don't know about you, but I feel a whole lot better because I believe that God is in the midst. Ah, if you know God is in the midst, we pray that the only way you can know it is through Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Revelations is so magnificently crafted that it's showing us that through Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, God was showing his love for us. And when you see what he went through and when, how he died for us and then how he rose again for us, who could reject that love? He did it not because you deserved it. He did it because of his grace, his mercy. 